Welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. And at this festive time of year, as we welcome a new year, I'm going back to the classics, which is the historical side of the focus of this channel. And I will be talking about the famous British writer, Charles Dickens. Now, he was a journalist and novelist of the Victorian era, one of the greatest writers in the English language, and his name is uniquely associated with the holiday of Christmas because of his great work, the, A Christmas Carol, which is essentially why I'm doing this right now. Even though I've officially missed Christmas by, by a little bit, it's still in the 12 days of Christmas, right? According to the old song, it started on Christmas. Not before Christmas as everything's done with a countdown in the modern, modern era, but starting with Christmas and moving on to the uh, old church holiday of Epiphany in January. Anyway, two years ago, Mrs. Desperado and I did a special series on the adaptations of the Christmas Carol. Because we had gone back and we were watching old adaptations and one thing led to another and we ended up watching 19 of them. And some we couldn't find, like Mrs. Scrooge, <laughs> uh, which I guess was based on Leanna Hensley. But anyway, uh, we, did it. we decided it would be fun to do videos on which we thought were the best and which were on the worst, and uh, we ended up doing three of them. So I'm going to put links to those videos in the, in the space below, in the comments below, and so please go check them out. Uh, they're a lot of fun. We talk about the best and the worst and the particular characters and has how they're portrayed. Anyway, today I'm talking more about Dickens' work in general, about um, some of his best-known novels, five of which I've read, and uh, these are among his most famous and most beloved. As I said in the beginning of this video, uh, Dickens was a well-known writer and social critic. He lived from 1812 to 1870, uh, dying far too young. He was born in Portsmouth, the southern coast of England, and died in Kent. He wrote 15 novels, five novellas, and hundreds of short stories. Now, he lived his whole life as a British subject, but he did travel a fair bit, including two trips to the United States. Uh, one before the Civil War, one afterwards. Now, in my childhood, the only book by Dickens I ever read was A Christmas Carol. And, uh, sadly, in school at the time, we weren't required to read the classics. So the only one I re remember having to read was Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, which was pretty good. Uh, definitely not the same kind of thing as Dickens. Now, I had seen screen adaptations of A Christmas Carol, of course, and also Oliver Twist, uh, one of his other most famous novels. But um, these, the, though these stories were known to me, a lot of them I'd heard of, but I didn't exactly know how the story went. So I didn't really know how they were going to turn out in a lot of cases. So they were new to me, reading, reading them for the first time in the last couple of years. Now there's several things, observations I made about Dickens, Dickens' fiction. First of all, it's very sentimental, which is out of fashion in this jaded, cynical age. But I like it. It's a good change. You wouldn't want to have everything you, you read be that way. But it is definitely nice to have sometimes somebody who has these kind of traditional values as Dickens did. His writing, his language is beautiful, and the characters are very memorable. Some of the best ever. You know, you know, people will talk about his characters, even people who haven't read the books, I think. They can be these stories can be very melodramatic at times, but he does strike an, an emotional chord, and I have actually shed tears from some of them, and which I believe shows that they're very powerful. His books, most of them are quite lengthy. I guess they were getting paid by the word back then, but they've, all, but they've always held my attention. Sometimes, rarely, I want him to get on with it, but for the most part, I forgive him because his prose is so, is so interesting, so well put together. 
As far as modern writers, the one who reminds me the most of Dickens is Neil Gaiman, another British writer. He's approximately my own age, and he's one of my favorite writers, at least as far as fantasy goes, he definitely is. And uh, I was looking through his you know, articles about him. He doesn't cite Dickens as a major influence, but he did channel Dickens by performing uh, one of the man's, one of the author's actual readings of the text of Christmas Carol. And he did this at the, at the New York Public Library in 2014 to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the publication of that work. Now, Dickens, I think, another thing about him is he's more or less the father of the improbable coincidence. Uh, well, he may not have been the first, but you can definitely see this in some of his work. Character A is actually the long-lost child of Character B, whom Character C knows both of them in completely different circumstances and seemingly unrelated. He, his work, well his work is very is very focused on right and wrong, on, on justice, on, uh, on uh, reform, on criticizing the bad elements of society. He was definitely a reformer. He could be very critical of British society, but he, unlike a lot of modernist, postmodern types these days, he doesn't hate the West. He doesn't hate his country or his uh, his religion. He was very Christian in the most fundamental way, in, in the sense of being charitable, of loving his neighbor, etc. Now he wasn't perfect, but he certainly, I think, epitomized most of those Christian value, values, even when he was really railing against the abuses of the church. Uh, these days, some of his writings may offend modern sensibilities, in particular his portrayal of Jews. <laughs> uh, Fagin, the, um, uh, the character, the uh, kind of a conniving corrupter of youth in Oliver Twist. Corrupter in the sense that he trained them as criminals, as pickpockets. But in a way, he kind of, in a way, he saved a lot of them from, from a worse fate because they were uh, hungry, they were abused, and so on. And he did provide a uh, warm place for them to sleep and, uh, you know, food on the table as, as long as they were able to, to steal for him. Nonetheless, he was a pretty a loathsome character, and he portrays a lot of the uh, stereotyped, the bad, negative stereotypes about Jews. Nonetheless, he he didn't get along with his fellow co-religionists in the book, so so I don't think Dickens ever meant to portray all Jewish people in the same light. So take it take it as you uh, take it as you will. And I think he was a very you know liberal person for his time. Now I'm going to go through some of the books I have read by him and say what I like about each, and you know from my least to most favorite. And I've read, so far I've read five, and I'm, and I'm continuing, continuing to go through some of his, his works as we go along. First is David Copperfield. And this is a great character study. The, the titular character is David Copperfield. He's a young father's boy who makes his way in a cruel, cruel world. And, and like many of his main characters, Dickens' main, Dickens main characters, he has a tough time at it, and his his mother is very young, naive, and fragile. Her, um, I mean, her husband dies, and uh, she remarries the, this man who seems nice at first, but he turns out to be very cruel, uh, kind of abusive, and uh, she takes sick and dies, and leaving um, leaving young Copperfield to his tender mercies, and especially of his of his mean conniving sister, and so you really love to hate them in this book. Another of my favorite characters is Mr. Micawber, who is one of, the, one of uh, David's friends as he's getting older. And he's this eternal optimist. He's this very pompous, but well-meaning man who's got all these plans, all these financial plans, and they always come to naught, and he ends up in debtor's prison living with his family, as they often did in those days, believe it or not. And in fact, it turns out he was based on Dickens' father, who, who did 
uh, live in debtor's prison with his family for a while. And yes, it's a, it was an odd institution. Often it was more like a workhouse where you were supposed to work off your, your debts. Sometimes they threw them in, in with petty criminals, which was pretty awful, I think. Definitely an odd institution. Some of the events in the story are from Dickens' own life, and uh, it was the favorite of his works. Uh, Copperfield is an ambitious young man who faces many struggle, struggles and perseveres. One of the favorite villains in this book is Uriah Heep, who gave his name to a prominent British rock group who has lasted many, many decades, even to this day. What an awesome name. And they, they did some pretty, pretty cool music. The official name of this book is The Personal History, Adventures, Experience, and Observation of David Copperfield, the Younger of Blunderstone Rookery, which he never meant to publish on any account. And uh, this was first came out as a monthly serial from May 1849 to November 1850. Second book, Great Expectations. Another great title, I think. Main character is Pip, which was uh, short for Philip. And he was an orphan raised by his cruel sister. Very demanding and judgmental woman. And, uh, by, and by her very kind, kind-hearted... Uh, husband Joe, a blacksmith. They were poor, uh, they were a poor working class family, and suddenly Pip is transformed into a gentleman by the bequest of a mysterious stranger. So he goes to London to live a life of luxury. And so he's trying, he's wondering who this benefactor is, but forbidden by the terms of the bequest to ask any questions about it, and you later find out who it is. There's some, there's some interesting twists and turns in the story, and some twisted characters. Uh, another one that I is my favorite is Miss Haversham. Now she's an old lady, a spinster, I isolated herself, who was her heart was broken by her her um, faithless lover, who abandoned her on the altar, and she is since lived in darkness in her mansion uh, with servants going out to fetch her stuff that hasn't come out at all. She's raising an, an orphan girl named Estella, very beautiful, and she's weaponizing her against the male gender because she wants Estella to go out and break hearts just as her heart was broken. Of course, Pip falls madly for her and, you know, despite Estella's warning that she can't reciprocate his love. It's a very it's a very heartwarming story. It was first came out as a weekly serial in uh, a periodical called All Year Round from December 1860 to August 1861. Next is Oliver Twist, one of those awesome character names that Dickens comes up with. Uh, there there's so many good ones, and this story is like a real life indictment of the corruption of church charities. Uh, in, you know, specifically the Church of England, they were supposed to do good for the poor, and they didn't always do that. They often ended up treating the um, treating the uh, their charges badly. And uh, Oliver Twist's name came from he was an orphan uh, from his mother. They didn't even know who her name was. And the the um, the or guy from the orphanage, the man from the orphanage, actually named him in alphabetic order because the last guy. Last kid, he gave a name with an S, so his name was T, Twist. And uh, it became a wonderful, wonderful musical play called Oliver! Exclamation point. Uh, created first stage in 1960 on London's West End. Went to Broadway in, eight, in 1962. Won the Tony in 1963. Became a movie in 1968. Screenplay by Vernon Harris. Directed by Carol Reed who was not a woman, <laughs> like a lot of Brits. Uh, Carol, at the time, could often be a man's name. And uh, great, great, uh, great show. Again, there was Fagin, uh, the Artful Dodger, who was a, a young pocket, who is, uh, as, despite his being a scoundrel, he was always fun. And the, the plucky young Oliver. The real title of it was The Adventures of Oliver Twist, Published as a monthly serial in Benton, Bentley's Miscellany, February 1837 to April 1839. Second favorite of mine was A Tale of Two Cities. Uh, this is a historical adventure involving the French Revolution. 
and it's one of the best best historical novels I've ever read, and and, I, and one of the one of the most beloved and mocked opening lines. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the season of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. I don't care. I love it. I love it. It was great. And uh, a lot of melodrama here and, and uh, you know, narrow escapes and so on. A tear jerker at times. Uh, the wrongfully imprisoned Dr. Manette in, in France imprisoned by the nobility. Uh, he, he gets out, finally meets his, his long-lost daughter, who was raised in England, very beautiful. And then there's the noble Charles Darnay, who romances the young girl. And uh, he was a noble from, from, from um, France, who denounced his family for being so arrogant and cruel to the peasantry. And in the insanities of the French Revolution, as he goes back to France to help, help out a friend, he's imprisoned for the crimes of his family. It, I, I love this, these historical references, and they're kind of maddening. They, they reminded me of what I've read about the Chinese Cultural Revolution, another time when society just went insane and punished so many people who were innocent for no reason. But it's definitely very enriching from this in this historical sense. This was published as a weekly serial in all the year round, uh, from April 1859 to November 1859. And last but not least, a Christmas Carol, full title, a Christmas Carol in prose, being a ghost story of Christmas 1843. And uh, this is a classic tale, greed and charity, and the true meaning of Christmas. Now. I've, I know there was a movie or something made about Dickens called The Man Who Invented Christmas, which is kind of misleading. I mean, some of these traditions are quite old that he celebrates. The deal was, I think, in that um, the Puritans, uh, a couple hundred years before, had tried to purge England of a lot of the festivities. They were so, they were such stiffs. They, they didn't like these worldly celebrations. And it took a while for Christmas to come back in full force, and that's something that, that uh, Dickens was celebrating, and something that has endured to this day. Now, there must be at least a hundred adaptations of this beloved work. Uh, very few pe people in the world haven't heard about the story, and character names like Scrooge, Cratchit, and Tiny Tim have entered the language as metaphors. Here's another great opening paragraph. It begins with, Marley is dead, to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. And it ends with, Old Marley was dead as a doornail. Sounds cliche now, but back then, I think it was fresh. Now currently, I am continuing with Nicholas Nickleby, and uh, it promises to be pretty interesting. Uh, again, a lot of social commentary commentary by by um, Dickens about you know, there's the British school system and about the British theater. And... Although a lot of people would dismiss Dickens these days as a dead white male, I think his literature is important and it deserves to be read as part of our heritage. Like history, like our history, Western literature matters. And it's important, even those of us without a European heritage, we still live in a country that was founded on that, so it's important to know something about this. Uh, furthermore, the works of Dickens, Dickens are available not only in, you know, book form, but also in audiobook form, some in very inexpensive, uh, inexpensive prices. His e-books, anyway, are free in Gutenberg.org, and I've read several of them from that platform. So for now, this has been my show, my video, celebrating the life and works of the great British author Charles Dickens. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. That helps us get out the good word about steampunk, science fiction in general, fantasy, and the classics. Again, I will put links in the space below to the three videos that Mrs. Desperado and I did concerning a Christmas Carol, the many adaptations thereof, a couple years ago. Happy New Year 2022. 
Hope this is a, a wonderful and prosperous year for all of you out there. And this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos, from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Thank you.